Thank you very much for being here at the military flight training event with us. Can you tell me, first of all, uh, what's been the most interesting discoveries you've made and, of course, what are the benefits to being here? For us, it's a great opportunity to come here uh, every year to, to listen to this uh, conference and uh, especially that we will see what's happened now and even in the future for the military flight training for the fast fighters and but even for the helicopter training. And it's also a great opportunity to keep contact with our customers and to have the opportunity to networking and meet new customers and also to follow the development on the market. For example, we see a lot of discussions of Red Air and other things that we think, we think it's very interesting to, to be a part of that discussion and see how we can support the community. Fantastic. Obviously, the Vitzel test range is the largest of its kind in Europe. Uh, aside to its sheer scale and its dark and its cold winters, what makes it such an attractive solution, uh, do you think, for flight training and flight testing? And to be more correct, it's uh, the largest overland test range in that case. Uh, but it's, uh, we have the possibility, because it's a totally unpopulated area, that we can actually do a lot of other things which I can't do on the other test ranges. In form of electronic warfare, we can jam GPS and we can fly a low level with night vision goggles and flare and everything like that as well. So. And uh, also, due to its remote location, you can perform, for example, live GPS jamming and live electronic warfare. And we also have the airspace and ground space to perform live firing and uh, uh, live exercising, for example, uh, using red air and advanced uh, full combat loop scenarios. So I think it's a, we have a good, uh, some unique opportunities that you cannot do in Europe due to lack of airspace and ground space. And we can also have very, as I say, huge bombs which they can't uh, allow to, to drop in other uh, countries as well. So, so. Excellent, all down to the space. And being something of a, a long-term provider in this business, um, you've obviously built up quite a deep understanding of the market. Can you tell us a little bit about who might be using the range currently and the typical training scenarios that might be underway there? Normally, which are coming, uh, for, for the first, uh, we have the Swedish Air Force and the Defense Material Administration in Sweden, and Saab, of course, which used in the, the test range. But we have spare time and spare capability and we sell it to other air forces, in, especially in Europe, and Army for the helicopters, and even for Army, which have uh, to do tests and even exercises on the ground with uh, ground-to-air missiles and even ground-to-ground -ground systems. And we also are open for defense industries uh, from friendly nations, for example. Uh, we work a lot with, uh, for example, UK uh, companies like M MBDA that uses the test trains for uh, firing missiles and things like that. And we also have discussions with the different air forces about training opportunities and live firing opportunities. So that's a wide variety of customers there. How do you handle specific requirements for each of those? Uh, normally, we start with the discussions uh, that we, let's say, we have one year before the actual exercise or training will, will come on in, in the test range. We have a discussion and we, it goes back and forth and we're going to see what do you want to, to have and we have to check it in Sweden, of course, on the test range. And of course, it needs to be confirmed by the Swedish government as well. So. Um. Just finally, in the context of the, the current turmoil in Europe that we're seeing and, and the possibilities of contingencies and conflicts, what challenges do you face at Vidcel uh, in terms of delivering relevant products for the future? I think one of the big changes in Europe is uh, that more and more uh, Air Force is talking about third-party uh, third radar, which uh, are trying, to grow, uh, trying to, to grow up in Europe. And I think that is one opportunity for to it because we have the airspace, we have the ground space, and that we have the possibility to host pretty big uh, training exercises for uh, air forces using uh, third-party radars. So I think that's one of the, the key things that we have to work about. Excellent. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you.